Sir, my name is John Wesley. Uh, sir, name is John Wesley. Good. Okay. Uh, in in okay. sir, in I last question, uh, sir. In India, I am seeing uh, uh, majorly recruitment process or admission process. It's mainly based on caste system, or maybe uh, caste system. So wh when you see the constitution of uh, Western countries, we are seeing principle of equality to each and everything. Then. Uh, I am seeing uh, caste system is the major oppression in India. In India, so who who brought the caste system into the India? What is the major source for Lord Wesley to uh, consider this? Okay, so you read Breaking India, but I'll give you because I'm being told we have to leave. So I'll give you one minute version. Okay, okay. Lord, there was a there was this theory of evolution by Darwin, and 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 he did not want it applied to human beings. He said there's no less and more evolved races. He didn't. He said so, but his some of his students, uh, who were racists, wanted to show the superiority of the West and inferiority of the people they've colonized, and they wanted to put it in the evolution system. So Risley's mentor was somebody who used, uh, and the name is given in my book there in Breaking India. He he introduced this idea that we can apply evolution to races. So he came up with this uh, thing that some are higher, some are lower, and all that. So Risley was sent to turn India into that scheme of hierarchy of people, some inferior, some superior. And so he was looking for trying out this with data collection and gathering and whatnot. So they tried a lot of, uh, uh, there was this uh, uh, mentioned, they were, they were also looking at nose index the length of the nose and certain facial parameters they would measure and then they would come up with some kind of a mathematical system to tell what whether you are higher or lower evolved because they felt that evolution goes from the perfect white look uh, facial and to down down to other people uh, I'm, I'm sorry it, it, it evolves from the africans who are down up up to other people so we were somewhere in between we people and so they, they then many different systems of uh, uh, ideas were developed on how to classify races according to a scale of evolution. So Risley came and he writes that he discovered this idea of caste and he feels that this, or jati and all, he feels that this is the perfect uh, place to apply his theory of uh, 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 hierarchy of races. So he comes up with this idea and they do a census of India, the first time ever. And in that census, they want to classify every person in a hierarchy of races, of uh, castes. So these castes are listed in a linear sequence. No two are the same. There cannot be two equal. Everybody has to have one, one level each. So you are number 19, somebody is number 35, like that. And in his first, uh, they go around asking everybody to count themselves their particular caste. And he complains that a lot of these people argue that they don't belong in the hierarchy where I've given them the assignment. I've assigned them a place and they don't even believe in it. There are cases where people put petitions saying that you put me in the wrong place, I'm not in that, my uh, caste is not there, it's higher, lower, whatever. So this was not some kind of an Indian system which he was doing, he was imposing his system. And there was resistance to his system from the people. So every 10 years he keeps repeating this, he does three or four censuses, one every decade. So during that 40 year period, this becomes fixed because in the British government, in order for you to get any services from the government or whatever, you have to write your name, your father's name, and your caste. And so it's like, sort of like you have this Adhyar card kind of thing. So there was this caste was this system of marking each person without which you were not a citizen to be counted who could get his rights. You know, certain jatis were declared criminal tribes. They were like 80 or so. Criminal tribes. There's an act called the Criminal Tribes Act of India. And in this Criminal Tribes Act, they classified all those jatis. They were fighting this system. They were fighting the British. They were militant. They did not want to be uh, treated a certain way. Some of them were Kali worshippers like that. And so the British were very scared of these people. And they were, some of them were classified criminal because uh, the British were cutting the forest to, uh, to export the wood which they needed. And so these people were fighting the military, as militants they were fighting the British. So the British considered them to be criminal tribes. So they were not, they were, they were a British creation of the, that they are criminals and hence it was legal that person by birth is a criminal. He done done anything, he just born, 
by virtue of birth in a tribe, he is declared a criminal. And these tribes were to be exterminated. And the term thug, we consider thug, we've adopted this term. We think that thugs are a bunch of those kind of people. But they were just a regular tribe. They were one of the tribes declared criminal. And so in the English language, to be called a thug became a normal way to criminalize somebody. So when we declare, when we call somebody a thug, actually we are playing into this Orientalism. We've adopted this colonial Orientalism because it's become part of our language. So this is the origin of this, how caste system started. Now, the Indian government should have created something different, should have said that a lot of people are underprivileged, they need help. So there should be uh, affirmative action and quota on individual merit, individual merit. Okay. See, in the U.S., when you apply to colleges, they make you fill out a form if you want financial aid. And it is entirely based, they don't ask you your religion. It is not asked. They, ask they, they will ask uh, your family income, your family balance sheet, and if you are looking for it, you may have to supply last two, three years of tax return to prove. And then you are based on your financial need and other needs, you know, if you are physically handicapped, those kind of needs, you know, uh, they will put you on a scale of your need, your given number. And then that is your uh, your number of, you know, to what extent you are a person in need. India should do something like that. It should have nothing to do with you belong to this caste and all those people are entitled more than someone else. That's a recipe for clashes between groups and other groups where these social scientists have a great lot of fun to sh work with politicians who fund these guys to dish out a scholarship to show that this caste was a victim of that caste. Uh, so many years back, and the and, uh, politician will come and save them. So this idea that your caste has been accused and your, ca your caste is the reason for your poverty, and I'm the savior, you vote for me, I'll go into pol uh, power, and then I'll get you better quota. So this casteism is basically a lobby system. It's a, Americans have lobbying, lobby groups. We have caste lobby groups. It's nothing to do with spirituality, it is nothing to do with dharma, it is really not the same as jati and varna were once. It has just become a political lobby system. And unfortunately, democracy has made it even worse because the, the people cluster into their caste groups to, in order to hold together and lobby. So if you want to break the caste system, then the way is not that you put one caste, another caste, and negotiate who gets what. That is a way to strengthen. The caste system is becoming stronger by the quotas. Okay. So the way to break the caste system is you turn it into individual level need. The need should be on an individual level. And that's, how, uh, that's the level at which you assess the need and, and you decide what kind of benefits the person needs. So that would break the caste system.